Shots fired, shots fired, troop down. Raise your hand if you think that there's a possibility you might be shot at. Every single one of you should raise your hand. So whether you have 30 years of experience or you have just one year of experience, you have the ability to be better than what you are right now. And I'll tell you what, go pull my videos from my first year as a cop. You can learn a lot of what not to do. What's that? Give back, give back. If we're honest with ourselves, we've all been pretty lucky. Ronnie's down, that was a down, that was a down, Ronnie's down, Ronnie's down. This is not an academic exercise. This is, this is a reality exercise. Our job is to train to know where that failure is, not figure it out out in the field. We talk about law enforcement happens in seconds. We literally work in fractions of seconds, right? We choose to put a gun on our side and our hip. We have to understand that that's the world we live in is in quarters of seconds. I think it's important with today's narrative uh, for the public to understand that uh, whether you're an officer or you're a citizen, we still have limitations as a just a human being. My name is Derek Hunter Wagner, uh, signed as the uh, Assistant Chief Inspector for the um, Marshal Service Training Division, and we are responsible for officer safety training and training division programs that are primarily delivered to the field and in advanced capacities. Uh, we've packaged it uh, as officer safety training because we are targeting state and local agencies that are not affiliated with our task force and they're not affiliated with the Marshal Service. The local brothers and sisters that we encounter um, all the time, whether that be fugitive investigation, protective operations, um, we can't do this job without them. My name is Brennan McDonald. Um, my friends call me Mac. Um, I'm a senior inspector with the U.S. Marshal Service Training Division. Tactical breathing, it is nothing new. It's something that we've been doing a long time, but if you guys can control your breathing. That's kind of the first step to controlling you. <laughs> I've never been in training where they actually put a heart rate monitor on us and monitor. You go through a scenario and you're like, oh, you know, I, I feel like I, would, I did okay. And then the instructor's like, yeah, your heart rate was in the red. You know, like you need to breathe, you need to calm down. I've never been through anything like this in a class. Stand fast and react to stimulus. Help me! He's shooting! He's shooting! Most of us are very comfortable in the violence and when it's going down. It's the after effect when we got to get on the radio and transmit and be like. We want officers to perform like Olympic athletes. We want them to perform like professional uh, athletes. And if you think about professional athletes or Olympic athletes, they have dietitians. They have workout programs. They know the date and the time they're going to have to perform. They know the opponent they're going against. They know everything about the opponent. They know their game plan, and uh, officers don't have that luxury. We don't know the date and time of our performance. We don't know the date and the time that we're gonna have to be able to perform optimally. And so we just want officers to understand themselves better so that they can then articulate and explain their actions, which is important from a law enforcement perspective because we do have to explain what we're doing to the public. And we just want them to be able to better describe what they went through why they did what they did. The why piece is important. So as a student coming to this training, it's like stepping into a haunted house, really not knowing what to expect, what's around the next corner, what you're gonna encounter. Oh my leg, God. So if we think, if we just simplify it pretty much down to a subconscious response and a conscious response, our conscious thought is very slow. It's our thinking, thinking right, brain. And, over. and in a critical incident, uh, a lot of times you'll hear an officer say that, um, I, I don't know, I just might just training kicked in uh, in this critical incident. And so that's what we want to happen is that their training just kicks in. But to do that, we have to have a subconscious response, which is very fast. If you think about our fight, flight, or freeze response, if you've ever been startled and you just respond in a certain way and you really don't know why, it's just a subconscious response. Responses, right? Yeah. Decision-making, judgments. Split second, right? No more Supreme Court says. 
they understand we're right forced to make those split second decisions right under tense uncertain rapidly evolving circumstances that's what we're trying to replicate here guys Drop the gun. we want to put a file there it may not be the exact situation, but that they can then have a response and their brain can say, you know what, we kind of know what we need to do here and let's take action. Tourniquet, tourniquet, left arm, left arm, left arm. Let's go, let's go, let's go. High and tight, high as it can go. Every second counts, let's go, let's go, let's go. Turn the windlass, turn it, tight. Quick, 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 you're losing blood, let's go. Stay in the fight, stay in the fight, let's go. Come on, come on, one more. There you go, 18.81. All this is is an exercise on perception of time, okay? When you think 20 seconds has elapsed, I just want you to raise your hand, okay? Keep your eyes closed the whole time. Just estimate when you think 20 seconds has elapsed. And go. Let me see your hands. Show me your hands. Do it now. Turn around. Get out on your knees. Do it now. Show me your hands. Keep them out where I can see them. Don't reach for that gun. Close your eyes. <laughs> don't move. Stay down. Don't get up. Keep your hands out where I can see them. Keep your hands visible. Don't move. Turn around. Face the wall. All right, stop. Open your eyes. All right, so the, the last one to raise your hands was 30 seconds in. Okay, so this is just estimating 20 seconds. Right? And we're in a pretty sterile environment, not under critical stress, not hopefully not sleep deprived, or not working on 12 hour shift. Uh, I think that all of the scenarios really made you focus on what is going on around you and learning to observe the small things. When you're in a high stress situation, taking just the last split second to observe what's actually going on around you before taking action. So what's unique about this class is the high volume of scenarios that we put our students through. I'm, I'm your side, your sword. Break it open. I'm covering. I'm covering. I'm covering. He's reloading. Hit him again. Um, again, like this week is about control and learning and teaching our officers how to be in control, not just people within their environment, but of themselves, both mentally, physically, and emotionally. Calm down. Okay. Take a breath. You know, something major just happened. Nothing wrong with taking a breath, composing yourself. Get yourself together, make a call, good to go. My, my life takeaway in my 27 years, 25 of them on the street, is that if we can't remember it, we can't use it. If it's not simple, we're not going to use it. It's the simple fundamental things that hold up under pressure. This is like tier one. <laughs> you think about getting, getting ready, getting tier one operators ready, this is, this is the place right here, seriously. They'll start you off with, with the basics, and they'll be like, you remember this? It's what they taught you, but it's, it's somewhere from, somebody coming from somewhere else, so now yeah. you gotta use your own yeah. mind, but still include that basic, so it's set up, but you still gotta do your own thinking, and you gotta see what you would actually do. So when I ask you, or I, we have this up there, and we talk about emotional survival, what does that mean to you? What do you think, what does that mean to you? Don't let things keep piling up until they're spread down. Okay, don't, make, don't let things keep piling up until it just, it just gets too heavy or it breaks us down, right? What else? To me, it's what are you going home to? Yeah, what are you going home to? Right, what's there? What's gonna be there, right? Uh, one, I gotta get home, but then also, how am I treating home, right? So emotional survival is important for our profession. It's one of the things we don't talk about, right? And it's a uh, heart set, the heart set mindset piece. And that's kind of what we're going to dive into. So this the goal is to get to the end of this career and still be able to enjoy life and have a productive life. And too often we see uh, how suicide impacts this profession and how the stress that officers go through impact this profession. So we really want to emphasize how to manage that stress and to understand that uh, we're, it's going to face us all. When we start our career, right, you walk across that stage, you raise that hand, you do that oath, and uh, you're like, I'm going to change the world, right? We come into this profession because we want to make a difference. We want to do something for good. Uh, we want to feel like what we, uh, what we contribute to the community has value. But then what do we see over time, right? Idealism becomes cynicism. 
When they call 911, they want the cops there to solve some problem. And we deal with frauds, we deal with liars, we deal with uh, trouble, uh, problems, we see bad things, we deal with car wrecks, we see deaths, we see suicides, we deal with divorces, we deal with things that happen to children. So we become somewhat jaded, right? We see this stuff, or we see the people that we take to jail, they go through the court process, or the judge just kicks them right back out. Right? And then we deal with them again, and the judge just kicks them right back out. And so we're like, really, what's going on here? So over time, this happens, right? This may be some of you. It's been me. We have to have an outlet, and we have to have a process to be able to deal with that. And so we really try to emphasize those type of outlets, hobbies, things outside of this profession that you can be involved in, uh, having associations with non-cop uh, friends and people that you also hang out and have activities with so that you can better manage the stress, therefore uh, hopefully able to make it to the end of this career and then have an enjoyable life after this career. You know, I have a lot of ideas as an officer about why things are wrong with this and why things are wrong with this. And what the Center of Excellence for Officer Safety does is no more ideas. Like, let's be part of solutions. This is not a team sport, this is a family business. Um, the men and women out there, they're, they're my brothers and sisters. And again, practice and people, that's what the Center of Excellence for Officer Safety is about. Um, we connect people together. For the future of the program, I think it's critical that this training reaches as many folks as we can reach with it. We all have limitations. We have resource and budget limitations and personnel limitations, but uh, we have to touch officers' lives with training. We have to constantly realize that uh, you can't just train once in your career and that's it. Uh, the Center of Excellence for Officer Safety, we would love to continue to run these programs for state and local agencies that are not part of our uh, task force and, and be that center of excellence where uh, state and local folks can come to the Marshal Service and seek out officer safety training. Not just this course, but future programs we develop and other programs that we currently have. So that's, that's the vision, that's the goal. Uh, this is the starting point of it. And these officers that are attending this week are on the ground floor of uh, the next level uh, and the next direction that this agency goes with uh, the Center of Excellence for Officer Safety.